Hi geography students, this is week two's lecture on an introduction to human geography. So if you haven't already watched the short lecture, it was video three from week one, please start with that one because there's gonna be a quiz question or two from that one on the week two quiz. And the rest of the information on the week two quiz uh, will come from this and the other short videos that are in this week's folder. Additionally, for reaction paper topics, you can choose anything from this particular week's topics. That's how it works each week. So choose a reaction paper topic from anything we talk about in this short video or one of the short videos that follows this one in the week two folder. When you do that, you can write about multiple topics if you would like. When you do that and you follow the um, reaction paper rules that are posted at the bottom of course content, for your quick and easy review, then you will be able to be better prepared for that quiz each week because you review those topics that are gonna be covered on the quiz anyway, okay? So, um, also, there is in each week folder a discussion board that is not for specific amount of points, it's for reference and it's for building community among us in the class because not everybody has an easy time finding good reaction paper topics and so I created a discussion board that I'm going to use throughout the semester to let you go on there and interact with each other and give each other pointers about about what topics you wrote about for your reaction paper this week or if you can't come up with a topic you can put a question on there hey somebody please tell me what you're writing for your reaction paper this week um, you can also give suggestions for outside sources for reaction papers sometimes I do that in these videos sometimes I will say here's a good example of what you could do a reaction paper on but other times um, you can choose you know from any of the topics that we discuss in class and you could always do that if I give a suggestion during um, a lecture you never have to take my suggestion it is the topic that sticks out the most to you or the combination of topics that you want to cover as a general review of the information to help you get prepared for that quiz that's coming up okay so I want to begin, or we are going to begin at the beginning with our cultural geography class, and we're going to talk about the spatial analysis point of view that we use in geography. We know that geography's main question is the why of where. Those are the kinds of questions that we ask. But under that big question, that's a huge umbrella that covers a whole lot of ground. And so our topic, cultural geography or human geography, you can use those words interchangeably. This immediately throws us into just the explanation of cultural geography and human geography immediately throws us into the analysis part of our brain function. Okay, so we are going to analyze connections and, and synthesize concepts. Okay. Um, Human geography, by definition, forces us to do just that. Because human geography is the study of, the analysis of, the ways in which people organize concepts of themselves or self-identity, their activities, which is a huge word here. Activities would include anything having to do with economics, food production, entertainment, work, any of those kinds of things, and many, many more, the way we design um, architecture, uh, the way we put money into a space program, the way we play video games, any of those kinds of things are activities. How do we organize these things physically in the space? What kind of places do we use to organize our activities, to organize our mental scapes of where we ourselves, notice my air quotes there, where do we feel comfortable in our environment? How do we interact with our environment? Do we use our environmental location as food production? Do we use our environmental location as leisure time, as decoration or some sort of um, fancy place to live, um, so to speak? So we, how do we organize literally the physical space, but also the concept of self, 
the behaviors, the activities, the rituals that we do in the places where we live and we interact. How do we interact with the environment? How do we interact with each other? Right now in the era of COVID, interacting with each other has a whole bunch of additional um, processes and customs that we're having to adopt into our daily life and into our concept of self. I used to be a big time hugger. I would hug students if they let me. Not anymore. We got to stay away from each other, right? We got to stay YouTube away from each other and for the most part. How do we interact with others based on what environmental factors, such as a pandemic that we have in the world right now? Um, and by the way, when I say the world right now, we can think of ourselves in the local setting or we can think of ourselves in the global setting. And so are we citizens of the world? What are, our, what are our activities that make us participants in a global place? What are our activities that make us participants in our local places? Are these places physical or are they part of our mental scapes? Um, you probably have, you know, what do I mean by mental scape? Okay, you probably have um, a general area around where you live that you're so familiar with, you don't have to pay attention to whether you make a right or a left turn moving forward. You probably have your apartment, your house, your room organized in a way that without really putting much thought into it, you can go to a drawer and open it and you know exactly what it is that you need out of that drawer without even really looking toward it. So these kinds of concepts of place and space are become part of our self-identity. Your political philosophy, your racial category, your ethnic group, your gender identification, the place where you exist in the urban space, all of these different kinds of things, the organization of those things literally in physical space, but also conceptually in our minds, that's what human geography is all about. And all of these things are connected. And we can look at certain environmental and social conditions. Let me clarify, I guess I don't have the word social written here, but please include it in your notes that you're taking. Environmental interaction, when I wrote it here, it literally means like how do we um, engage with our physical landscape, our weather, our climate, those kinds of things. For instance, sometimes when my heater cycles on while I'm making a video like this, you might see my lights flash a little bit. And so I am interacting with my cold environment by living in a permanent structure where there's electricity that puts heat into the air so that I don't have to dress in animal skins, you know, up to my earlobes in order to stay warm inside my household. Other cultures have those behaviors that I just described, their way of staying warm is not through electricity and a forced air um, heating system, but it is through putting on items that they have collected through interaction with their environment and interaction with others, which doesn't just include human beings, like perhaps you um, assumed when I said others, but it also includes interacting with other creatures in nature and how do we use those things for our benefit. All of these things are connected. So for instance, the activities might be related to foodways. So if you live on an island such as the country of Taiwan exists on an island in the Indian Ocean, the China Sea, um, Taiwan is a tiny island compared to the number of people who live there. And there's not a whole lot of space for the kinds of meat products to be raised there. Like you and I can have a lot of space here in the United States for the beef industry or for the pork industry, for chickens to be raised, despite the amount of space that we have in the United States to raise these things. Quite often, beef production, chicken production, etc., is limited to tiny little areas compared to the population of poultry or the population of bovine that are in the area. But in Taiwan, it's even more limited. So there aren't very many at all 
beef, pork, or even chicken products that are uh, produced commercially in that country uh, because of the limited space. It's an island, so there's a ton of sea creatures and sea life in general, including plants that exist in the sea that are consumed on a regular basis uh, in, that, in that nation. I have a friend of mine who is an immigrant here from Taiwan, and we both love to cook, and she constantly teaches me geography lessons when we get together to cook because she describes the ways in which the environment in her native land produced these things things naturally and therefore they were harvested by the people the activities it became an economic um, activity to harvest things from the sea or to farm things from the sea and therefore it became very very common to have all kinds of um, foods from the sea that you and I will never see in Kroger uh, we might have to special order it on the internet and it you know if we can even get it um, they have things like uh, sea cucumbers and things like that, that uh, is an animal and not a plant, by the way, that she will eat um, on a regular basis when she goes home to visit her family that is there. She interacts with the environment through movement from one place to the next, globally moving. And uh, anyway, human geography, we study all of those kinds of things in uh, this class. And so the very first part of this class is going to be kind of deconstructing, so to speak, unpacking this really long and complicated definition um, of what human geography is or what cultural geography is. And we are going to look at some, um, some issues that affect human populations worldwide. The first part of the semester, really what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at um, consensus, global consensus, and human interaction with the environment on a macro scale mainly to look at the difference between first world issues, second world issues, and third world issues. Um, sorry for that phone ringing in the background. Sounds like 1954 is calling. Um, just disregard that please. Anyway, we're going to look at the way that humans interact and organize their places based on survival and how culture emerges, where culture emerges, how culture emerges, and culture includes everything that we do on a daily basis from our belief system to our architecture to our education system to our food ways, which I love to give examples of since I'm a major foodie myself. Um, it includes all of these interactions in the local environment, but also globally, because increasingly in our world, we have interaction across space and even time um, from one place on the planet to the next and even to the space station and back right, through satellite communication and these kinds of things. We have global connections. Globalism is part of what we will look at in this, um, in this first chapter, in this first semester, um, or this first half of the semester. And also we're going to look at our five themes of geography in the next lecture that we have. Because this is the why of where questions. Why of where is the umbrella here? And we look at all of the connections. We synthesize the concepts that are a part of all of these different things that make up what we study in human geography. So I told you geography is holistic, and even though we are on the cultural side and not the physical side of geography, um, our class is called cultural geography, we've got to talk about some physical side of geography also, and it's still huge, even though we've broken it down into physical geography and cultural geography. So our next short video will be over Mr. Help. That's our acronym for the five themes of geography. Hopefully, Mr. Help will assist you in being able to remember what what the five themes of geography are. And at any time we study any of the concepts that we're going to look at over the course of the semester, we're going to ask the why of where questions, but put them in the context of the Mr. Help topics, the five themes of geography. So cliffhanger, you'll have to wait until the next video to find out what Mr. Help stands for. I'll see you then.